Is this the Ultra Boost 5.0? What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm doing something a little bit different and that's taking a look at a sneaker that hasn't even been officially confirmed yet. As I'm sure most of you have seen by this point, an Instagram account by the name of Sneaker Profits leaked this image earlier this week. Sneaker Profits said that this was the upcoming Ultra Boost 5.0. And as you can probably tell, this image took a lot of people by surprise because it doesn't look like an Ultra Boost. I mean, yeah, it shares some similarities. It has a full boost midsole. It has what looks like a prime knit upper. But there are so many things about this shoe that just don't look like our standard Ultra Boost. So before we dive deeper into the sneaker itself, I think it's important to note that this is by no means a confirmed image. This could be a false rendering for all we know. From what I know of Sneaker Profits, which honestly isn't a lot, they do seem to have a pretty decent track record when it comes to exposing early sneakers. So I know by saying what I'm about to say, that might take some of the fun out of all of this, but take this image with a grain of salt because this is in no way confirmed. We don't even know if the shoe is an Ultra Boost. It could be a completely different sneaker altogether, but I'm willing to bet it's the Ultra Boost 5.0. Since the Ultra Boost introduction in 2015, the sneaker really hasn't changed that much. Granted, we We've had some small changes to the prime knit and yeah the cage kind of got translucent at one point and then went back to solid and blah blah blah. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The shoe is pretty much the exact same thing it's always been. And me being someone who doesn't love change really liked that because it was always one of my favorite shoes and the fact that they kept it pretty much the same meant that I could go to the store whenever my last pair wore out and just grab a new pair with no problems. But it finally looks like Adidas is making a pretty substantial departure from the original Ultra Boost and changing things up in a way that a lot of people don't think it's for the better. First things first, what's going on with that midfoot cage? What, what happened? So I guess this probably isn't the best example. This is an Ultra Boost Clima. In fact, you know, I've got real Ultra Boost back there. Hold on a second. The Ultra Boost that we all know and love has always had a midfoot cage that has three very definite stripes to it. It just looks clean, it looks minimal, it fits the overall sporty but lifestyle aesthetic of the Ultra Boost. This new version, however, seems to have switched out the TPU midfoot cage that we're used to to some thin, translucent midfoot mesh that sort of has a stamped Adidas Three Stripes logo in it and no separation at all. Uh, it's also a little big and bulky and just doesn't look great. But hey, you know what? That's all my opinion. That's nothing against the designers of the Ultra Boost. I'm just so used to the original Ultra Boost that this new change that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense doesn't, um, doesn't come off as well for me as the other pairs do. I mean, it does look lighter, and at the end of the day, the Ultra Boost is a performance shoe, which in the same way the Jordan brand only creates shoes that are performance driven. So even though their retro Jordans are huge lifestyle hits, all the new sneakers that they're coming out with aren't based around lifestyle, they're based around performance on the basketball court. The Ultra Boost has always been designed for performance first and then lifestyle wear afterwards, so I'm sure that there's a performance reason behind this change. And like I said, it's most likely weight reduction and also probably provides a more flexible fit. It also now looks like the shoe comes with a split prime knit upper. I mean, it all looks like it's still woven together as one piece, but the bottom half is a black and the top half is sort of like a light gray. The knit pattern does look pretty similar to the 4.0, at least on that sort of light gray area. This could just be me, but it also looks like the prime knit is a lot thinner than the standard Ultra Boost prime knit. And that could just be around the ankle area, like that looks more like an NMD ankle than an Ultra Boost ankle. I mean, if you look at the old Ultra Boost around the ankle, there's a lot of padding and it's super, super comfortable and super easy to get your foot in and out of because it doesn't really kind of grip your ankle at all. This looks like it's supposed to be more of a sock-like fit, like it grips your ankle. There doesn't look to be too much padding really anywhere around the shoe, but you never know. I really have to get my hands on a pair first before I can really say that. I mean, the laces look the same. You've still got four eyelets, which is the same for all the other Ultra Boosts. Um, that sort of stuff seems pretty similar. Moving back on the shoe though, it does seem to get a little bit weird again because they've switched out the standard Ultra Boost heel cup, which is one solid piece for sort of an outline of this heel cup. I don't know what it is, but that red line kind of reminds me of like a light bike trail a little bit. Not only does this heel counter not have a center section, but it also sort of spills over onto the boost midsole, which, hey, you know what, could be there for stability, I don't know. I really wanna be careful about what I say because a lot of times when you see that first image of a shoe, it looks completely different than how it does in hand. And you guys know me, the Ultra Boost has always been one of my favorite silhouettes. So like seeing this that at first, doesn't look great in my opinion, but seeing this kind of bumps me out a little bit because it just doesn't have that same sort of like really classic, really nice vibe that I loved about the Ultra Boost. It's possible that once I get it in hand, things might change. I might really like the way it fits. I might like a different colorway. Like I could definitely see the shoe in like a solid olive or a solid maroon and I think that would look great. But right now, man, it's just kind of like not, not there yet. It's kind of weird to me that they filled in the midfoot cage and then hollowed out the heel counter. 
I don't, I don't know why they did that. As you move down the shoe, you'll notice that the ridge on the side of the boost is a lot more pronounced on the newer version of the shoe. And a lot of what I've been reading is that Adidas actually replaced the Ultra Boost midsole, which a lot of people know and love, and actually switched it out for the AM midsole. And if you're not familiar with the AM series, basically what it is, is it's a very running centric sneaker. And each release of the shoe is actually specifically tailored to different regions in the world. And not just the colorway, but actually the entire makeup of the shoe. So in New York, the boost midsole is a lot more tailored for running on pavement, so there's a lot more more boost in the forefoot than there is in say the AM4 LA. I guess to sum it up, the shoe overall is a much more refined version of the Ultra Boost, specifically made for performance running. And based on what we're seeing with this new possible Ultra Boost 5.0, it looks like Adidas is taking what they learned from the AM series and implementing it on the Ultra Boost. But again, the Ultra Boost was originally designed for running and not so much lifestyle, so you have to take that into consideration as well. There's only really this one image of the shoe, so you can't see the bottom of the sneaker, but I would assume that it probably still uses a continental outsole. You can't see the back of the shoe, but probably just kind of looks the same. Um, I would assume the other side of the sneaker looks the same as well. The leaks are indicating that the shoe will release in February 2019 for a retail price of $180, which all that seems totally believable and I, I would expect that to be the case. Again, whether this is actually the Ultra Boost 5.0 or maybe they're going to come out with a completely different Ultra Boost that's not even named 5.0, maybe it's called something else. Um, who knows? But uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Am I excited about this shoe? Yes. I've always loved the Ultra Boost, and any iteration of the shoe, I'm definitely open to trying. Do I like this shoe right off the bat? Eh, I don't love it, but I'm gonna give it a chance. But that about wraps up the video for today. I'd love to know your thoughts on the potential Ultra Boost 5.0, and whether you'd be willing to try out a pair for yourself, or you just absolutely don't like the way it looks. So of course, make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.